continue what we talked about last time. Um, spend a few minutes talking about how, uh, what the UI could look like, and then spend more time talking about sort of the brains of it, the problem domain logic, and the classes. I think we did a good job last time talking about the card and deck classes. Um, we'll pick up with that. But first I wanted to show a very simple example, and I posted this to Canvas, of how you could use a different view other than a recyclable view, re recycled view, to hold the cards. It's pretty similar. Um, my rationale for this is the recycler view comes with some overhead, and for something as simple as a card game, I don't know, it might be like the proverbial killing a fly with a sledgehammer. I don't know if you need all the power of a recycler view, because it's not like you're going to have dozens of cards in a hand. You know, you're going to have a few. So I took and I created this little app just to show how we could display a card within another kind of view and how we could add cards to it. It's also a good second example of inflating. Inflating exists when you are taking a XML layout and sort of bringing it to life. You know, I like to think of the XML layout as sort of being like uh, dehydrated objects. All right, they're a description of the objects. And when you inflate them, you're actually bringing them to life. You're actually creating the actual real objects. So let's go and look at the code first, and then we'll get back to talking about the other objects and classes. Let's review what I have in this application. Application is sort of a grandiose term for this. Um, it's really like part of an application, a sketch of an application. I have my values files as I had before, where I have all my strings. And some colors, I think, and maybe some styles. I'm not sure if I use these or not. I have two layout files. I have the main layout, oops, I clicked on the wrong one. I have the main layout file, which consists of a basic linear layout, to control the uh, general flow of it, which is oriented vertically. I have a button to ask for another card. I have a button to reset. I then have a scroll view that contains another linear layout. This one is oriented horizontally, and this one will allow me to put cards in going across. Okay? So, if you're doing a blackjack game, we'd probably have two of these, one for the dealer and one for the player. But I just have one of them. All right. The idea here, and this this is this is one of, this is a challenging thing as as a, uh, a teacher of classes. You know, I want to give you examples of how to do things, but I also don't want to do too much in the examples. So try to bear, you know, I try to to, to create fairly bare bones examples in something like this, and sort of nudge you in the right direction without you know, without doing everything. This is the layout that we're going to add stuff to, the hand layout. All right. What are we going to add to it? We're going to add simply a view. In our case, it is an image view. Now we could do something like this in a recycle view and an adapter too if we wanted to. Remember, with the Recycler View and Adapter, we have just text labels that we viewed. But there's no reason why we couldn't have the uh, Handler View be an image like we're doing here. So I have a image view that is going to get added to the linear layout, which is horizontal, which is called the hand layout, the layout for the hand. I then have a card, which doesn't have much in it other than a constructor, a get suit, and a get name. Um, I have a raise for the suit name and the card name that corresponds to it. Heart is 
hearts, diamonds, clubs, and spades. So element zero, one, two, and three. And then element zero through 12 for the name of the card. These two things are private. All right. I have in assets what I showed before, and that is a folder for each of the suits followed by two through ace. Again, it shows it in alphabetical order. That's why the ace appears before the queen. But we have two through ten, then jack, queen, king, and ace. So we have all 13 of the cards per suit. All right. We simply concatenate the suit name, uh, uses, or rather not simply concatenate, we use the suit name as the folder and use the card name as the image name. Well, here's our main activity. This doesn't do too much. We do the standard thing. We set our main content view as being activity main which is what we did on all of them. Effectively, that's like inflating that XML. They don't call it inflating because it's different, but the same idea is there. We're taking this layout and we're creating actually the objects that are in that layout. I'm grabbing a pointer to the hand layout, which is called P hand layout. In other words, my thought is, is that would be like player's hand layout. You might have a second one, D layout for dealer's hand layout. And that is, I'm going to find the view by ID of our ID hand layout. So this is what we've done a bunch of different times. We're finding a view within our main content view. And we know that it's a linear layout, so we're casting it as a linear layout. And we're storing a pointer for that. So now we got in this variable, linear layout, we got a pointer to the linear layout that's in our main layout. By the same token, I grab pointers to the reset and the hit button. So I can do things for them. And I set the on click listener to a new reset button handler and a hit button handler. This is a little bit different than how we've done it before. We've used anonymous classes and we've made classes, uh, we've made our main activity implement the on click listener. But in this case, I actually made internal classes and given them a name. I made a public class reset button handler, implements view on click listener. And then I have my event handler for the on click, go and do something. This is not an anonymous class because the class has a name. It's reset button handler. All right. Uh, it is an, an inner class though. It's an inner class because it's defined as part of the main activity. It's inside that class definition for the main activity which means it has access to the instance variables and methods that exist on the main class. True to form of the things I've been doing so far and the examples I've been showing, the event handler doesn't do a lot. The event handler simply calls a method on my main activity. If I click the reset button, it calls an initialize game method. If I click the hit button, it calls a give player a card method. Those are both methods defined on the activity. The initialize game is easy. I call a method on the linear layout, p hand layout, remove all views. And that does just exactly what you expect it to. It removes all the views that have been ha uh, added to that linear layout. So that will start off, when I click that button, it will get rid of all the cards that have been put in that linear layout. Give player a card. Now, this is where, this is only part of the real program, obviously. I just create a card which has a suit of zero and an arg name of zero, which, if we look at our card class, 
zero, two, it's a two of hearts. So I'm going to create a two of hearts. I'm then going to go and add that to the linear layout. I do that by first inflating linear layout inflator. I create a, an object that is a layout in, uh, inflator. Inflator. I create a object who's responsible for inflating my XML file. All right, this is in the framework. I didn't write this. It will go and it will create the actual objects from the XML description of them. All right. I then inflate using the layout, our layout card, which is this XML file. The parent for this is going to be P hand layout, which is the linear layout, horizontal layout, where I'm going to put the card. And then attach the root I set as false. We're going to play with that in a minute here. We're going to change it to true and see the effect that it has. If I were a conspiracy theorist, I would think that they hire people to push the loudest carts ever seen on earth around outside my classrooms four days a week. Because I always get that. That sounded like I've heard trains that were actually quieter than that. At any rate, what are we doing again? We are creating a new image view, right? Because that's what's in the card view, is an image view. We're creating a new image view by inflating that layout. And we're telling it the parent is p -hand layout, and we're saying attach to root false. All right? So when we're done, we have a new image view called new card. Well, what I want to do is I want to associate the image view with the image itself. All right? Think of an image view as like being a picture frame. You can take and you can put multiple different pictures. You can change a picture in a picture frame. If I had a picture frame up here, I could show one picture. I could take out that picture and put another picture in, All right, another image in. So think of the image view as being the picture frame. I'm going to grab the image, and this is how I do this. I'm going to stream input the, from the assets of this. I'm going to try. I have this wrapped in a try. I create a pointer to the assets. I create an input stream. I grab a pointer to the card I want, the card being the suit plus a slash and then the card name. It's in a folder called, that matches the name of the suit, plus a slash plus the name of the card. I then create a drawable by creating from stream and then I set the new card's image to the drawable I just created. These three set, uh, statements effectively read in the image for the card and set that new image view's image to be that card. In our case, it's always going to be the two of hearts. I have it wrapped in a try-catch block because anytime we do something like this, there's like a chance of failure. What happens if that file isn't there? Anytime you do file I.O., think that there's a, a, a possibility of failure. So, uh, and it's not the kind of failure that would show up by a compile, right? It would show up at runtime. So I'm going to put a try catch in there, and all I'm doing really is logging the exception uh, to an exception file so I could review it. So when I'm done with this, new card is my image view. I got that by inflating my XML file, right? My XML file 
of card. I inflated that and I've created a new image view. I set the image associated with that image view by reading in the card image that I want using this syntax. And then finally, the last thing I do is I add to the layout that new card. And I add it in the position that represents oops, what the current number of children are for that layout. In other words, will that add at the beginning or add at the end? At the end, at the end right? So I'm looking to see how many cars are already there, and I'm adding in that position. Remembering that the numbering starts with zero. So if there's two children there, that means there's two cards there. That's child zero and child one. So I'm going to add the new card in as child two, which will put it after zero and one and two. So we'll add it to the end. Let's run this and make sure that it does everything it was supposed to do. Away we go. Add the two of hearts each time. It's adding them, presumably. I am not sure why it's not scrolling, but chances are you wouldn't have that many cards anyhow. All right. Play another game. I can hit the clear button. So this is, you could do something like this. I did notice that if I made the layout vertical, the scrolling did work. So if I go and run this, I can scroll up and down. I don't know why the horizontal isn't scrolling, but that's what we have. All right. Now, sometimes between the time I write an example and the time I reuse the example, I get a little smarter. All right. So I'm going to go and change this false to true. And if my reading is correct, by doing that, I don't have to tell it to add the view at the end. It'll just add the view at the end. Let's see if that's correct. Or did it not start up yet? Did I think it started? Wow, that was, that was ugly. So I guess that goes to show I did not get smarter between this semester and my last. Yeah, it dies. Hmm. Okay. So, If you run into that, what you can do is you can look at the log and you can see exactly what it crossed, it, it died on. They're reading from input stream. It might be I can't add it until I've actually formed and set the image, and therefore that's what's blowing up. That would seem to be the case here. If you had to um, add it, then, um, like add to the oh, right. You're right. So I have to uncomment that out again. Okay.
set it back to horizontal. We had talked about making the cards maybe overlap. All right. Let's see how we can accomplish that. The one thing I thought when I talked to, someone asked me about this before, I thought is by setting a negative margin on this. So, says we can set it like this by saying Android colon layout margin 5 DIP and let's see if I can do a negative number. margin left. Apparently so. Well, this guy seems to think so. So let's go and say Android layout. see what negative six does us. And we'll run it. Yeah, it's it's indented but not much. Well it's, you're only doing like six Right. Pixels, so. So six density independent pixels. So now, if I do negative 60, that's going to be nearly the entire width. It's going to be nearly the entire width. That kind of looks pretty good, right? Except for what? Except the first one's off. Does it say that all of the, the margin is negative 60? Repeat that, please. All of the course margins are right. Negative, sorry. We want the first one to start here, and then we want each subsequent one to, to be um, have a margin of negative 60. How could we do that? How could we fix that? Okay. Well, here's the, you could here's the answer. You could probably do it a bunch of different ways, right? Here's the way I would think to do it. The different one is the first card, right? Because this looks the way I want to, except the first card's wrong. The first card is almost off the screen. So what we want is we want the first card to be a little different than the rest. 
So we could do that one of two ways. That's like the teacher's mantra, I think. Well, we could do this a couple different ways, at least the programming teacher's mantra. I could have, a, I could have two XML and flight files. That seems like duplicating effort. It might be better for me to write a something that says that this is the first card. And the first card programmatically set the margin to zero uh, pixels. So let's do that. Let's go in, in here, and I'm going to write, I'm going to create a Boolean. Is first card, I'm going to set it to true. And when I reset the game, I'm going to set is first card back to true. And if I've given the player a card, I'm going to set is first card to false. So now, what I want to do is, if it is the first card, I want to change the margin. So if is first card, then programmatically, I want to change the left margin. And what I can do is straight that way. Around this way? Yeah, go go straight. Take a take a left. Uh -huh. Go downstairs and then there'll be like a glass enclosed okay. thing that you go through. All right. So, let's try this. something. No, no, you have to change relative layout to linear layout. That's the one you're using, right? Relative layout to linear layout. Of that, though.
that to generate the in, in, import. Android rid, widget. Margin, margin layout par params. That's not showing. Android view, view group. run this and hopefully it'll do what we want. First card's there, second card's there, and so on. Not bad for not having a clue how to do it. <laughs> All right, so what did I do in a nutshell? I recognize that I like the way that it worked with the negative margin, except it wasn't right for the first card. So I wrote a little routine to handle the first card differently by setting the margins uh, for that first card differently. Okay. Let's uh, exit this example and start talking again about the business rules because we identified two classes and I think we did a good job identifying them what they need and all that. We identified a card class and a deck class. I have a couple questions. Yeah, sure. Uh, main activity main uh -huh. is tools colon context equals edu dot Lorraine ccc. I'm getting an error, compile error on that when I downloaded it. Uh, on the XML file, activity main XML. that match what you call this? What you call the package that it's in? And then in main, main activity, like, I just have a, cannot resolve a simple R. Um, try cleaning and doing a rebuild. I've done that a couple of times. Okay, let's look at it in lab then. Well, I mean, I don't know what else to say. Yeah, no. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah, I would say I don't know what else to say without. Should I delete it? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Let's go and take a look at it, and, and we can see. Uh, you could try redownloading it, but I don't, I'm not sure really what that would do. All right. So we had a card, and we had a deck class last time. The card. Um, had two attributes that we could define a couple different ways, however you wanted to. We could define it as a string or an integer. You saw in my example, I did it as an integer. Um, you could also use an enumeration for them, for the suit and for the name of the card. Um, you could have the get the image name from there, which I didn't do in my example. I got the image uh, from, uh, I just gave the suit and the number and I had the UI figure out the image. Uh, either way would be an acceptable way uh, to do it. Um, we had a deck then that was a collection of cards, an array list. We picked an array list because the number of cards in the deck is going to de decrease as you're dealing them out. We had something to initialize a deck of cards to create all 52 of the cards that are the members of it. We had a uh, method to shuffle. All right, and we had a method to 
uh, deal the card, which would involve returning the top card, the one in position zero, all right, and then removing that from the array list. Now, the good thing is, is when we're doing this planning, it's almost like, you know, if we don't know exactly the statements to do that, that's okay. We're going to have faith that we can remove something from an array list, <laughs> all right, because there's probably a command that does that. And we know that there's a way to, we probably know that there's a way to get an element off the array list and to remove it. And we probably know, based on what I said, that there is a ability to shuffle an array list. All right, so there's probably some method that allows you to randomly order or sequence it. If not, then we'd have to figure out a way to write one. But we're going to look first to the stuff that's built in in an array list and do it. So what other classes are we going to have besides those two? I don't recall if we put those up on the board, if we talked them, if we mentioned them, or what. What other classes are we going to have for this? I think we did mention at the end we have a hand. Okay. We're going to have a hand. What attributes are going to exist with the hand? Array list of cards. Why an array list again? Because you're going to be adding. You're not going to have a constant number of cards in here. What other methods would we have in here? Okay, constructor. Which you could go a couple different ways with this. You could pass in uh, a, a, another array list of cards to build your array list. So if two cards were given, you could pass an array list that contained two cards and have it. You could have an empty constructor that constructed an empty array list and then add. All right. There would be a method to add a card. We might have a method to get card array list, or get cards, that would return an array list of cards. And we might have a method to get card. We might have a method to get a number of cards. Get how many cards? You may need some, you know, you're definitely going to need these. You may need one or more than one of these methods. All right? Because what's one thing that we want to be able to do with the card, with, with our hand? We want to get a value of the hand. All right? We, we need to be able to get the value of the hand. Now, is that method going to be in this class or in another class, to get the value of a hand? Well, you could, you could uh, inherit when you sit and put it in a subclass. Okay, you could. You could create a, you could do this a couple different ways. You could create a blackjack hand. Which had get value of the hand that returned an integer. All right, something like that. Well, B, you could put it in the hand method. What's wrong with putting it in the hand method? Well, it's like yeah. using it in other, other card games. Yeah, is that what you were going to say? Yeah. Yeah, other cards also have hands, and they have a different way of evaluating the hand. All right, uh, so therefore, it really doesn't belong in the hand. It could belong in a blackjack hand class, or where else could it be? We could have a blackjack rules object. Or blackjack rules class, which would have 
evaluate hand method that would accept as an argument a hand. Our rules object would give it a hand and determine the value of it. All right? Or what other methods might exist in the blackjack rule method that possibly could be in the blackjack hand class as well, or it could be in a rule class? What other things can we put in there? What other methods can we put in there besides evaluate hand? Okay. Okay. So, should dealer, yeah. What's the argument for that? Pass it to hand. What's this going to return? Returns a boolean. This evaluate hand is going to return an integer. All right. So, what's that method look like? Remember, we said that a dealer takes a hit on 17, or I'm sorry, dealer takes a hit on less than 17, stays at 17 or higher. So you have to evaluate. You have to call evaluate. Call evaluate hand. Pass it the hand. Check if it's less than 17. If it is, return true. Otherwise, return false. Okay? This is a lot of what programming is. Not necessarily writing the code, but thinking through what methods you're going to have and how they're going to work together. All right? You guys are doing a great job thinking through that. All right? Another method you can add uh, a Boolean, um, something which ends a Boolean, like, um, like, um, is busted. Is busted. Yeah. Right. And we'll just check if the hand value is greater than 21. Right. It's going to accept an argument of hand again, and it's going to return a Boolean. So we give it a hand and we say if it's busted or not. All right. What other method would we have? I'm thinking of one big one. There might be others as well. well we want to know who wins. Right. So, who did player win? Because remember, remember the dealer can't see the player's cards. We're showing the player's cards because simply, you know, you as a player have to know what you have to know whether to hit or not. But if we were actually playing the blackjack game, the dealer wouldn't know what you had. So all the rules for the dealer hitting is based on, um, is strictly based on the value of the dealer's hand. Algorithmically, I, I don't think we could review that. Um, that might be something for us to look up. But I'm pretty sure it has nothing to do with what they see your cards as. That they that they still have to go based on. Right. I, I, I think there are rules where they have to. Do it, right. Like said. But I, I think the last time I played, you know, they deal your cards face up. All right. You can't see the dealer's one card. That's him. Right. Here, here's the way I, I remember, and again, I'm not a gambler either. I think they deal your cards face down. They deal um, one of theirs face down, one face up. You play. Let's say you haven't busted. So you have, you have 
20 in your hand. They flip their card over, and then they apply the dealer algorithm. Okay, so I think your cards are still hidden, and they apply the rule of taking a hit if it's less than 17, not. We can double check that. on this assumption, and if, if we find different, we can build that in. Anyhow, Boolean did player win. You'll get two hands, right? A hand of the player and a hand for the dealer. that you might have.